the Ogdoad reveals the Ennead. This is an ancient piece of hermetic wisdom, an aphorism that points to a very simple truth, which is that at the center of the Eightfold Wheel is a ninth point. And in the work that we've done so far, we have developed a concept or a practice of a lamp that encodes all of the, or compresses even, all of the past of the Tree of Life uh, into an octahedron. On this octahedron, there are 224 lamps. There are 28 uh, on each facet for a total of 224, making it a map not just of the week, but of the Venus year, and therefore of this course. At the center of the circle is a ninth point, a place where that octahedron sits. So when we take the, um, the magic word makashana, which, as discussed before, is a trigger word for the the chariot creating power of the number 418. What does this mean? We'll learn this more as the course progresses, but we use Matkashana in the eight directions outside the circle to create these eight tetrahedra. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the previous video in which there is a meditation that activates this. Um, it's important to realize that in working with the tarot and the Kabbalah in this way, every, <laughs> every week is quite progressive. So we're building on the material from the previous week. So if you are engaged, then the experiences will produce more and more and more compressed results, which will mean that what initially felt to be a simple practice becomes the core of something that has a great deal of torque and a great deal of focus. So I hope that um, you are engaging in these weeks. Uh, if not, then look at some of the previous videos and, um, and get um, get a sense of what we have done so far to build to the point where we have this, essentially this eightfold wheel around us. Because today we're focusing not on the exterior of the wheel, but on that ninth point, which is really at the center of it. It is the flower that blooms when when the eight is uh, when the eight is acknowledged. So. This is a diagram of nine Ouroboros serpents. This is an important diagram for my work. Uh, as time goes on, we'll explore more about where this comes from and what it implies. But these nine interlocking serpents represent uh, nine loops of energy, a consolidation or synthesis of all the various different moving parts of um, of the the magical system in, in uh, that that we're using, and <clears throat> this is very much an appropriate symbol for the sphere of Yisod. So Yisod means foundation in the Kabbalah, and if we look at our Kircher Tree of Life, very nice classic classic tree of life. There we go. We see the Esod is this sphere here. And um, this sphere completes actually all the spheres that are contacted by the center. You can see the center, Tippereth, beauty, the seat of consciousness. There's only one sphere that consciousness does not touch, and that is Malkuth. And Malkuth is the projection outwards onto the world. Well, what is it a projection of? It's a projection of the complete prismatic image that assembles in Esau. So in Esau, you have 
a totalization, a blueprint, if you will, that gives us a world which we then project outwards uh, onto experience, onto what's called the empty mirror of Malkuth. So the unconscious is a very important place. Sometimes, for the for many of us, in fact, the unconscious contains all sorts of um, traumas and wounds that distort our perception, that cause the repetition of undesired events. And so one of the things that we do, uh, called shadow work, is we encounter the, uh, the complexes at the heart of these undesired repeating events, uh, and we resolve them in the foundation so that they no longer cause the projection onto the world or the attraction of this, um, these negative forces or these ne negative experiences. In effect, Yisod, or <laughs> the imprinting of consciousness onto Yisod is the fundamental mechanism of magic. Uh, the chaos magicians have pointed out that communicating through to the unconscious and bypassing the, the, the psychic sensor that is the bicameral mind is the key to causing change uh, in, in, in a fundamental synchronistic way in the world. And uh, that, is, that is a chaos magic way of basically saying what we're going to call this, this conduit between Tipareth and Esau. The consciousness is, is, is seated in Tipareth. The unconscious is in Esau. The body is in Malkuth. And to affect change in conformity with will, you need to create that message uh, that, that transmits between the conscious and the unconscious. At first, this can be quite difficult because there's a lot of turmoil. This is why we do the work that we do of gradually mapping and coming to terms with and, and exploring the different areas of ourselves because once we do, we can get a kind of equipoise so that this process is a much clearer thing. Whereas at first it might be very much embroiled in doubt and wonder about who we are or what we want. By the time uh, an, a, thorough explanation, uh, a thorough exploration of the tree has been conducted though, these kinds of doubts tend to resolve themselves because we tend to find ourselves connected to a greater mission. And that helps us know what it is that we want to project into the world. Knowing and understanding and appreciating our own desires is basically what magic is about. If you can be 100% at one with that which you desire, then that's what's going to manifest. It's those self-interferences that make it difficult to keep a solid foundation. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to talk about how to build a foundation, how to essentially draw strength from Esau. Esau is the seat of strength. If we look at the Rider weight cards, we can see the nine of the Nine of Wands, known as the Lord of Great Strength, shows a veteran who's really gone through and experienced what is necessary to bring about a robust and powerful strength. The Nine of Cups shows a person who has essentially an abundance of great, sometimes called uh, the Lord of Happiness. This person is basically has all the fountains turned on um, and is flowing uh, completely through this sphere. This is the feeling of happiness. Um, we have um, this striking, uh, strikingly uh, distressing card. I mean, for some, this is the most distressing card in the deck. The Nine of Swords uh, represents despair, cruelty, um, negative self-talk, doubt, and yet there's this comforting blanket, um, this, this weave of destiny that uh, allows this person um, to, <laughs> to be warm. So there is, there is a, a remedy for it, but this is a really um, a card of alienation and loss of sleep. Why is it here in the foundation? Because 
when we create a world, when we consolidate a world, there's always a sense, I think, of perhaps self-doubt um, that we have to contend with, uh, perhaps uh, alienation, perhaps a sense of being alone that we have to um, we have to face, and uh, that pain. It's a bit like the, the sand that becomes the pearl. You could also see a character like Atlas in this sphere holding up, uh, holding up the world. Yisa is very much the foundation of things, that effort that it takes to uphold the world. And the world is our deep unconscious, almost prismatic sense of um, the way things are. So um, you'll see I have this uh, lovely kind of rainbow uh, quartz crystal that um, or hematite I think that I, that I use because it, it it feels to me very sodic um, you could pick other stones uh, an amethyst would be an excellent stone to place here perhaps a moonstone this is a sphere assigned to the moon um, the nine of discs is uh, is an image of great abundance yet also loneliness I love this card because there's three, there's a great story here. These three consciousnesses that exist in this card. There's a snail and there's a human being and there's a falcon. Some would say a parrot, but you look at this glove, right? So what do you have here? You have a being spiraling in on the most minute details of the world. <coughs> and you have a being in the middle. And then you have a being that spirals way high up and hopefully returns. So you've got a really neat um, three-level conscious model here. Um, the, um, if you want, the spirit, uh, the soul, the body. Uh, we, can, we can divide triplicacies into to many things. Um, the triple principle lets us analyze really um, anything to do with consciousness on, on, on three levels. We find it again and again and again. And with nine, of course, which is three times three, we have a excellent uh, and full model of becoming. So let me show you what I have in mind when I say that. I think I st stated at the beginning of the course that um, we could look at the the spheres, Kether, Chokma, and Bina, as the beginning, the middle, and the end of the beginning. And Chesed, Geburah, and Tepereth as the beginning, middle, and end of the middle. And Netzach, Chod, and Yisod as the beginning, middle, and end of the end. So in other words, at this stage, what's come together is a complete a complete energetic model and uh, and that's what's meant by foundation I'm going to show you uh, a arithmetic uh, oddity that I find very very cool this is the number series from 0 to 9 9 is important because 9 is the last of the one digit numbers so the last true singularity on the on the plane of, of, of digital numbers and here you have the series written in both directions 0 to 9 0 to 9 right to left left to right and um, what's interesting is if you do that you kind of pair them up uh, you have 0 and 9 well 1 times 9 is 9 1 and 8 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 9 is 27. 4 times 9 is 36. 5 times 9 is 45. 6 times 9 is 54. 7 times 9 is 63. 8 times 9 uh, is, um, is 72. 9 times 9 is 81. And 10 times 9 is 90. So this is a fascinating uh, demonstration of the fundamentality, uh, the way that nine weaves through everything. If you multiply any number by nine, um, it will produce something that, if you add up all the digits, will also total nine. So, 
say 9 times 3 is 27, uh, 2 plus 7 equals 9. And this extends into, you know, any number of digits. You know, if you had a, have a 400 digit number that's divisible by 9, it will ultimately reduce down to the number 9. And the number 9. Number 9. Number nine. Okay, that's my Beatles joke for the for the <laughs> for the record. Revolution number nine. Um, nine has this powerful concentrating um, crystallization. So we could talk about the enneagram. The enneagram is a diagram that was used by Gurdjieff. Uh, and it's certainly um, certainly has a <laughs> applications in esoteric theory and practice. I haven't really studied it, so I reference it here because I know that there are some people who are watching this who are like, "Oh yeah, the enneagram um, for personality profiling and for studying of the self." This is a phenomenal tool. Uh, it is an excellent thing to be studying now. I haven't really used it. I haven't gone in the that particular direction. There are so many tools that we can bring to bear on this sphere. And the tool that I want to bring to bear is called the low shoe. Now, I should probably qualify this because um, when I show you this, many of you are going to say, ah, the magic square of Saturn. Yes. In the West, in the Western tradition, this is called the magic square of Saturn. Why? Because Saturn is assigned to the number three, to Bina, and this is a three by three square. And I think that is, um, it's useful. Uh, my approach is not exclusively a Western esoteric approach. I have uh, studied, obviously, chaos magic. I've studied Taoism, Buddhism, um, and um, Kabbalah. So I'm bringing in quite a mix of things. It's as if, you know, we're talking about recipes, right? There are, you know, Western style recipes. Uh, there are so-called Eastern style recipes. I don't really go by the Western Eastern division. I think it's a, a bit silly, but you have all these different cultures that have used different esoteric material in different ways. So uh, living here in Hong Kong, and having studied I Ching and uh, Kung Fu and uh, Chinese uh, philosophy, my reference for this particular figure is the Lo Shu. And the story of the Lo Shu is fascinating. The Yellow Emperor is said to have seen a tortoise rise from the sea with these markings on its back. Uh, it's called the River Diagram, I believe. and. Um, it's the first recording of a magic square in human history. And it becomes the basis or the matrix on which the I Ching is mounted. So this is different than uh, a Western style, okay, this, this gives us access to the power of Saturn. I want to, for the sake of this video, for the sake of this study, I want to take a different route. Uh, I want to explore the Lo Shu as a foundational mathematical matrix of nine cells, so much so that it, 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 it's so foundational, think of it as like the back of a great turtle, a great turtle that is the world. And this is what I'm hoping to help convey in, in this study of Yisod. What I see in Yisod is like a great turtle. And the shell of that turtle contains all of the categories that we are going to use to filter the world with. And so these nine cells are the nine fundamental categories integrated into a harmony in such a way that Esau's strength comes from this powerful integration. You see, these numbers six and two and seven is 15, and seven and five and three is 15, and six and one and eight is 15, 15 in the horizontals, verticals, and diagonals. There is only one way of arranging numbers in a three by three by three matrix or a three by three matrix that will produce a magic sum. And it is this way. Now, of course, some of you say, no, hold on a minute. Uh, you know, 
Wait a minute, we also have this one. Ah, but it's the same arrangement. It's simply mirrored. And what about this one? And this one? So you can rotate and reflect it. In which case you're going to have eight possibilities. Imagine those in the outer rim. But there is no other arrangement. You could not, for example, have a four in the middle. Or the seven in the middle. These will, will not produce a magic square. There's only one Lo Shu. And what I want you to imagine is the rotations and reflections around the outer rim, but in the center is the kind of the hub, the ninth, um, the ninth potency, which is, in a way, the, the, the Lo Shu that we cannot represent. That is, um, that is all of these at once. And so in our work this week, we're going to create a talisman that will allow us to draw on the strength of the Lo Shu. Uh, I have here two, um, uh, two depictions. So I, I've got them uh, going in two directions, right? So you can see the, the pattern is quite simple. It goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are reflections of one another. And uh, you'll notice that five is smack dab in the middle. You can put that pentagram right in the middle. Remember when I talked about in Geburah about how the the, um, the severity is this place where things fall apart, but it's also the place where things are reconnected. So it is a, a place of unique responsibility. And, um, and five has this power, and it really becomes apparent uh, in, in the low shoe. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you just a few more things that I've done. In a previous... Um, Ah, it's just over there. I'll get out of reach. All right, intermission music. That was easy. All right, so we made this little turtle. How did we make this turtle? Um, it was a set of nine meditations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And after each meditation, I did a little drawing. I may have done that in the reverse order. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I didn't know what I was going to see. So I got ready. I prepared myself. I brought myself to my circle. And then I simply projected intentionally to Yisod and went through the nine zones, if you will, uh, in order. And when I saw something, I came out and I drew it very quickly so as to help record that for myself. And, uh, and so I saw a bunch of, uh, of, of different, different turtles. There's a two-headed turtle. There's a turtle that looks like an artichoke. There's... The process of, 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 of scrying, which is really what this is, um, is a process of trusting your imagination, which means you're going into your unconscious. We've been doing this for weeks now, and you are having an encounter, and you are faithfully recording that encounter, either in a poem or a drawing or some writing. And by developing this ability, you are coming into the precisely the dialogue that creates magic. Remember I say that the mechanism of magic is that consciousness intersects with reality through the mediation of Yisod. So Yisod is the place where we we imprint the the sigils, uh, the stars, the it's where everything happens when we are deliberately seeking 
to affect change in the world. Now, when we're looking more f upwards towards uh, mystical realization, um, we turn our attention away from Esod. But Esod is still active because Esod is in a resonance with Doth or knowledge. We'll talk about that more um, further down the line. Um, but what I want to do now is um, is a meditation. We're going to build a talisman. So this will take a bit of preparation. So what you'll need is uh, some uh, double-sided tape or some tape or some glue, some adhesive. Um, I have some here somewhere. And um, you will want two of these, one for each direction, because we're going to make 18 images. We're going to scry 18 cells and we're going to make 18 images. And we're going to do them with trust in our unconscious, not too much uh, uh, discursive force, if you will. Uh, we're looking for images and we're going to record them when we get them. Um, we're going to first follow this pattern. Right. This will be the first pattern we follow, and this will be the second. So this is a very good map for you to have. So you want to have map number one out, and then map number two underneath it. Okay. And the other thing that you're going to want to prepare is a set of squares. They don't have to be fancy. I decided to make them fancy uh, because I want a really nice talisman. Um, the art that we create, if we feel love for it, if we feel fondness to it, if we feel that we put a lot of effort into it, it will have more power. So I've got these prepared. This one's outlined in gold. This one's outlined in silver. And I have the map written next to it. So in this case, we're go I'm going to look for images for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And in this case, it's going to be um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's 18 images in total. I'm going to personally be using a brush pen. Um, and when I get the images, I'm going to draw them in. And so the end result will be uh, something that you'll be able to draw on for strength. You'll be able to anchor in this. So take the time that you need now to gather um, scissors if you need them, a nice pen if you need it, the maps, and um, prepare two squares of equal size because we're going to actually stick them back to back. And you'll see how that works. But um, yeah, get this ready. Take the time you need and come back. And uh, we'll do this. We'll do this exercise together. So preparing yourself with the squares and the map, the upper square, the first square, will follow this map. So have it out. For the meditation, you can close your eyes, but you will need, obviously, to open them uh, at times to orient yourself. So feel free to do that. Uh, do whatever it is you need to do to calm yourself, to get reflective, and to allow the images to arise. And without judgment, um, make the marks that you need to make to recall that experience. Remember, we're making maps. We're not looking to create realistic depictions of our visions. We're looking to be able to recover them through the marks that we make. So, relax.
Breathing in from above and below. Into the center and out through the four directions. Fortifying the circle. Sato Arepo Tenet Opera Rotas. Visualize pentagrams all around the circle at the four quarters and at the four demi-quarters. You are in the center of a circle and at that very center is a golden octahedron. You know that the entire week glows as it passes through the points of the octahedron calling the energies of the planetary powers, invoking them into the circle. And you know that on each face of the octahedron are 28 little lights, 224 lights, each one a day spent in taro each one a moment of consciousness, all connected in the center. And all around you, outside the circle, outside of the eight gates, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight tetrahedra made of light and crystal spinning gently at the eight points of the octogram. Makashana And the center opens like a flower as we find our strength The great tortoise arises, the consolidated full world, the foundation beneath our feet. Become aware of the Loshu Square. Bring up the first of the two squares. And prepare your tools. In your map and as you look at the square knowing that the projection of consciousness into Yisod is the exploration of the deep unconscious allow the square numbered one to open like a door. Project your awareness inside. Asking for a vision from the great turtle. first clear image to come to mind and it travel through your pen and when you're ready to make the marks in the cell marked one
Make the marks that you need. to recall the vision. And when you've made that mark, return to your center and turn your attention the second cell. Allowing it to open like a door and projecting your awareness inside. Translate the vision into marks on the page. Let them flow through your pen without judgment. And when you have recorded the vision Return to center and focus your awareness on the third cell, the third square, and allow it to open like a doorway. Project your awareness through the doorway. And seek an image in the third cell. Once you have found an image in the third cell, make the marks that you need to make. In order to recall that image, and return your awareness to the center. Now turn your focus to the fourth cell. And allow it to open like a doorway. You're 
looking for an image in the fourth cell. Make the marks that you need to make. in order to recover that image. And once you've made those marks, Return your awareness to center. Turn your awareness towards the fifth cell. And imagine it opening up like a door. Project your awareness into the door, looking for an image. Make the marks that you need to make to be able to recover that image. Once you've made those marks, return your awareness to the center. Become aware of the sixth cell. And let it open up like a doorway. Project your awareness into the sixth cell. Looking for an image. Make the marks that you need to make that will let you reconstruct that image. In the sixth cell. And return to center. Turn your awareness to the seventh cell and let it open up like a door.
project your awareness into that door. And receive an image. Make the marks that you need to make to be able to recover that image. And return to center. Turn your awareness to the eighth cell. Let it open up like a doorway. And project your awareness inside. Find an image and make the marks that you need to make in order to recover that image. Return to center. Become aware of the ninth cell and let it open up like a doorway. Project your awareness into the doorway. Look for a vision. Make the marks you need to make so that you can recover that vision. And return to center. At this point, you have nine cells with images in them. And they may be very, very simple. Don't overthink it. Now I want you to take the second map and look at the second square and get ready to do the same thing but in a mirror direction.
So I'm using the second map. And preparing yourself. Turn your awareness to the first cell. Let it open up like a door. And project your awareness inside of it. If you're looking for an image. And you're making the marks that you need to make in order to remember that image. and return to center. Turn your awareness to the second cell. And allow it to open up like a door. Project your awareness inside. Look for a vision. And once you've had a vision, make the marks that you need to make in order to recover it. and return to center. Turn your awareness to the third cell and open it like a door. You're looking for a vision.
making the marks that you need to make. in order to recover it. And return to center. Turn your awareness to the fourth cell. And allow it to open up like a door. Project your awareness inside. Make the marks that you need to make in order to recover the vision in the fourth cell. and return to center. Turn your awareness to the fifth cell and let it open up like a doorway. Project your awareness inside and look for a vision. Make the marks that you need to make in order to recover that vision. And return to center. Become aware of the sixth cell. And open it like a doorway. Project your awareness inside and look for a vision.
make the marks you need to make in order to record the vision. And return to center. Turn your awareness to the seventh cell. Let it open up like a door and project your awareness inside. looking for a vision make the marks you need to make in order to record it so that you can recover it. And return to center. Turn your awareness to the eighth cell. Let it open up like a doorway. Project your awareness inside and have a vision. Make the marks you need to make in order to be able to recover that vision. and return to center. And finally, turn your awareness to the ninth cell. And open it up like a door. Project inside. Find an image. Make the marks on the page that you need to in order to recover that image.
and return to center. Now you have two squares. with images that you have scribed for each square. So there's nine images for each square. And I'm going to cut out both of them. this. I'm less worried about being absolutely exact, but I want them to be roughly the same size. Cut around like so. I'm not really looking at the images right now. I'm kind of letting them arise, making the marks to record them and moving on. And something very interesting happens because they're reflections of one another. Which is that if you cut them both out to a reasonable size, and they're both already roughly the same size, So I have two squares like this. You put them back to back. And the overlap isn't perfect. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Later on, I might even laminate this, but I also might just mount it or keep it in some kind of safe spot. But keeping them both upright we put them back to front like this. And what's interesting is that the pictures match up. So cell five here on the one side is also cell five on the other side. So these have a correspondence. I got this eye in the shape of a turtle and I got this uh, compass point. It's the eye in the turtle and the compass point. The fifth cell is the center. And you can imagine this circle that we drew uh, with the eight gates and uh, the eight tetrahedra matching this map. And so once this is together, once this is um, fastened, 
it will be like a little grounding talisman that I can place on my altar. And it's also a map of visionary experiences. We can use this for rune casting as well. For example, if I draw some runes, and in this case, it's on the gold side, but you can kind of decide whether it's going to be on the silver or gold side. And I've cast the runes, and one of them went off altogether. And I have Thurazaz in the center and Hagalaz above it, above it, which is definitely a challenge. Um, where will I put the third one? So I've made a row. And this can be a combination of divination and um, magic. So you can use the symbols on the map to combine with the runes. So a challenge to my inner vision will allow me to crystallize fortune in such a way as to bring wealth and well-being to my house in the center column. And that's one way of reading it. This is a multi-purpose tool, and it lets you make a, a, an energetic foundation that you can anchor into. You can make a new one whenever you want. The scrying process gives you a glimpse into what your unconscious feels that would be valuable for you to think about. And the tensions created in these lines the horizontals, the verticals, and the diagonals match up the deep emotional energy of the pictures with a dynamism that brings them together almost into a harmony that's like a frozen music. Uh, magic squares are like that. So this is a uh, powerful talisman that connects you to your own unconscious that you can use as a brace or as a foundation for when you explore anywhere in the tree of life or in this system. So I hope this has been useful and interesting. The process of scrying on magic squares always yields surprising fruit. So I encourage you to try it. And um, thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Peter Dushemin. This is the Forest of Life Venus calendar in the week of Yisad.